everyone and welcome to this week's dandelion lesson here on patreon and it's always my favorite video of the week to make and today i have a couple of things i want to share with you that i've read um, over the past few days during my morning reading and they're both from mary oliver and they both you know so i randomly select poems i use a random number generator and i use that um, to select the page that I turned to. And the first one, um, this was, I think, Monday, was from a book called Felicity. And the poem is called Storage. And I'm going to read it to you. Storage. When I moved from one house to another, there were many things I had no room for. What does one do? I rented a storage space and I filled it. Years passed. Occasionally I went there and looked in, but nothing happened, not a single twinge of the heart. As I grew older, the things I cared about grew fewer, but were more important. So one day I undid the lock and I called the trash man. He took everything. I felt like the little donkey when his burden is finally lifted. Things. Burn them, burn them. Make a beautiful fire. More room in your heart for love, for the trees, for the birds who own nothing, the reason they can fly. Whew. <laughs> so the first thing I thought of when I read this poem is my friend Lisa who is here with us on Patreon. And I've been getting to know her over the past couple of months. And I just, I feel so connected to her in many ways. And she has recently made a big move and has been talking about, we've been talking about things just like this, you know. And that was the first thing I thought about. But then I also thought about myself and my lifelong habit of being a pack rat. And I don't mean in a, in a really tremendous way, but I, like I don't have a lot of clothing or, or um, jewelry or things like that, but I have an awful lot of books. And you know what? It's just going to stay that way. I'm, I'm, I'm a book person and I'm always going to be surrounded by books. Um, but I also have far too many art supplies and I've gone through them at times and made boxes to donate to either high school students that might need things or, you know, different organizations, or I've just sent things to other people that I didn't feel a need for anymore. But I just keep collecting them, you know. And I think part of that is um, because it's my job and, and you know, I feel like I, I want to share beautiful things with people. And I, you know, I'm, I'm just, it's just my nature. I, I just can't wait to try all the colors, right? So that's one another thing. But I think the thing that is most <laughs> prevalent in my mind is my basement. Because in my basement, there's just a lot of boxes that I haven't looked in for 25, 30 years. And I'm not kidding. You know, why do I need to keep those? You know, I, I, I feel like it, it's like always there in, in the depth of my soul, you know, sort of sort of um, gnawing at me, you know, that I have all of these these things in my basement. It, it's a very um, metaphorical situation, isn't it? So, you know, it made me think of that. But for here, for us, um, I wanted to talk about our supplies, you know, and how much do we really need? And, and I think... Um, My solution for myself at this time is, is that I'm being very selective about um, the tools I have on my work table and then have good storage in my studio to put other things away. And then every now and then I can put the things I'm using away and select new things so I'm not constantly affronted with you know too many choices. So that's my best situation that I can think of for now is, is to do it that way because I don't think, um, and there are some things I can certainly go through and, and give away. 
but I don't think I'm the kind of person that's not going to buy new colors and new brushes and new paper and all of those things as, as I learn about them. I just think um, it's the nature of what I do. It's part of my work. Um, and so I can certainly be more uh, judgmental, not ju I don't know what the right, selective. I can be more selective about what I do um, purchase new and I can be more mindful of using up what I have. But I thought it was an interesting thing to think about with our creative practice. And even, you know, like in the last video, how I talked about finding one thing that you really want to explore. And I know Marguerite had mentioned um, in a comment here that she loves circles and that she finds them everywhere and they have great meaning for her life. And and she she shared a painting um, recently, a beautiful circles that she painted. And so maybe that's her thing, you know, and maybe she really focuses on that for a while. And, and it's like me with my landscape, you know. Um, so I think, that, you know, to revisit that thought again from the last video, if we narrow our focus a bit, you know, if that can bring us some sort of solace and even more solace and peace in our creative practice. And even when we do these intuitive lessons, like dandelion lessons, these, these intuitive paintings, um, to consider that thing when we're painting it, to explore it more and more and see where it takes us. Um, it's like Michelle and her moons, you know, it's the same thing. Um, you know, it's like Zorana and her birds. You know, it, it, it's a really beautiful thing, I think. So anyhow, I just, I wanted to read that to you. It, it brought many things to my mind personally. And um, I just thought it was a poem, a poem worth sharing. So that's from Felicity. And then let's see here. This next one is from a book called White Pine. And um, it's also by Mary Oliver. And it's a collection of poems and prose poems. Um, a lot of these are in other books as well. So this is sort of a collection of them that all sort of fit a theme in a way. And let me find the one. Okay. It's called Yes, No. And this poem, when I read it, it it's something, it, the, the, the gist of it is something I think about often. And I'll talk more about that later. So it's called Yes, No, with exclamation points. How necessary it is to have opinions. I think the spotted trout lilies are satisfied, standing a few inches above the earth. I think serenity is not something you just find in the world, like a plum tree holding up its white petals. The violets along the river are opening their blue faces like small, dark lanterns. The green mosses, being so many, are as good as brawny. How important it is to walk along, not in haste, but slowly, looking at everything and calling out, yes, no, the swan, for all his pomp, his robes of glass and petals, want o wants only to be allowed to live on the nameless pond. The catbriar is without fault. The water thrushes down among the sloppy rocks are going crazy with happiness. Imagination is better than a sharp instrument. To pay attention, this is our endless and proper work. So I'm going to read this poem again to you. And this time, I want you to really think about the imagery that she's sharing with us about the plum tree and the, the images that come in our mind, the, the violets with their blue faces like small dark lanterns, the green mosses, the swans with his robes of glass and petals. And then how she's sort of pers using personification when she talks about creatures and things in the natural world and how we as humans do that. You know, we, I mean, Think about, you know, when we feel energies from trees and we personify them, right? We give them emotional qualities and human, human quote unquote qualities. And I often wonder, you know, I mean, how do we know, right? How do we know that a stone doesn't have feelings, right? How do we know what well, we don't know? We don't know what birds are thinking 
um, or how much love a chipmunk has for her babies. We have no way of knowing that. And why do we need to, right? But it's, it's so interesting how she talks about the necessity of having opinions. It's a very human thing to have opinions. So there's many levels to this poem that affect me. Um, but what I want you to focus on mostly is the imagery that's held within it. Yes, no. How necessary it is to have opinions. I think the spotted trout lilies are satisfied, standing a few inches above the earth. I think serenity is not something you just find in the world, like a plum tree holding up its white petals. The small violets, I'm sorry, the violets along the river are opening their blue faces like small dark lanterns. The green mosses being so many are as good as brawny. How important it is to walk along, not in haste, but slowly, looking at everything and calling out, yes, no. The swan, for all his pomp, his robes of glass and petals, wants only to be allowed to live on the nameless pond. The catbriar is without fault. The water thrushes down among the sloppy rocks are going crazy with happiness. Imagination is better than a sharp instrument. To pay attention, this is our endless and proper work. So let's think about that and let's think about how poetry can bring us such rich imagery in our mind. When I read about a swan with his robes of glass and petals, my heart just like, I mean, I wanted to cry. It, it's just such a beautiful image that I've never thought of before, right? And, and poetry can do that. So if you're not a reader of poetry in a regular way, gosh, I suggest it. Start with Mary Oliver. It's just so rich and it's so, um, we can enter it so easily. It's not difficult. It's like some poetry you can read and you just don't get it, right? You can still find beautiful imagery and all, even disturbing imagery, but we just, we feel like it's a, like above our level of understanding. And I have that all the time with, with certain poets. But Mary Oliver is approachable and I can enter into her world so easily. And it always makes me better. And it always encourages me to get out and pay closer attention to the world. So I, I'm hoping that you'll, you'll make reading poetry a regular practice because the imagery in our minds that it creates is so rich and, and valuable. And I can just, just see trying to paint a swan thinking of his robe of glass and petals, right? It's just beautiful. But the very last line, or the very last two, imagination is better than a sharp instrument. To pay attention, this is our endless and proper work. If we don't forget that, we will go far. Okay? So just some thoughts for today. And um, I don't know, was there one in here too? No, that, that was something different. So today I thought I would paint, um, oh, first I want to draw a soul card, so let's do that. And I don't even have to really shuffle them too much because I have so many and I just grab a different section every day but it feels good to shuffle a little bit. Ah, animals, <laughs> look here. This time the animal is the one paying attention and there's a human form inside or, or within the tree. So giving the tree um, human qualities, you know, there's this peacefulness, this peacefulness and the animal is so alert and so, you can see that there's a great wind and the animal is so alert, right? The animal has some knowing, some real alertness here. And I also see a gentle face up here and I'm not even sure if it's meant to be there, but I see it like the wind has a face. I get so much from these cards. I just, I love them so much. So there's our soul card for today. And I'm going to, you might notice that I always put crystals on my paper and I select them um, and hold them in my hand and just kind of center myself and say a little prayer before I do these. But um, I, I choose them just magnetically, you know, which ones speak to me that day. And I, I believe that they sort of 
impart their energy to, to my workspace. So I have a piece of Fabriano paper um, because I would like to send this out in the mail to someone as a dandelion lesson. And I have my um, black velvet silver brush size eight pointed round. I really like these. And then I just grabbed my um, tin of Jasper Stardust paint. So I there's a, a color, you can see that my magnets have fallen off and I, I need to re put, put them on with better glue. But I, um, there are two colors from Jasper Stardust that I really, really love. And one of them is called um, Deep Forest, and it's a forest green, and it's different than anything I've ever used anywhere else. And it's a color that I'm deeply in love with. And so when I ran out, I ordered another pan of it, and then also of the um, um, Verdigris. There's a color called Verdigris. And when I ordered, I won... Um, there was a giveaway and I won and I had no idea I was even entered just by buying something. And so he's, he was very generously sent me all of these paints, which is quite amazing. Um, yeah, so I have those to use today and um, I'm going to just spritz them with a little water because some of them I've noticed are a little bit harder to pick up than others. Um, and there are two cadmium colors in here. There's a cadmium yellow and a cadmium red, which I don't typically use too often, but I used to have them. I mean, it was just a very generous giveaway. And then I'm just going to paint. So I'm going to put some music on and I'm going to paint. And I'm going to get, hold all of those things from the poems in my heart, but I'm also going to think about my my place right my thing and so maybe it will be that place or maybe it'll be something totally different i usually just randomly pick up a collar and begin and then just let it evolve all right
was completely unexpected. So I was really, when I started to paint, I looked at my paint box and I was really drawn to this red immediately. So I just picked it up and made a mark totally intuitively and just went from there. And um, I think it's really beautiful. <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised. So I have no idea um, where it came from, but I love it. And that's the beautiful thing about this type of painting, this intuitive process-based painting is that um, sometimes we just never know what's going to happen and we, we are often pleasantly surprised. And I think the only thing that I want to do is I want to add my stamp um, before I send it out to someone. And I think I'm going to add my monogram. and a dandelion. There, and I'll write a note on the back and I'll, I'll send it up in the mail to someone. And I hope you'll do the same and I hope you'll share um, the paintings that you do after this lesson. So that's really all, that's all I have for you today. And I hope the poems were meaningful to you and I, Hope that if you're not a daily poetry reader that you'll consider it um i i just i can't even express the benefits that i receive from opening a book of poems every morning so i hope you're all having a wonderful day i hope you have a great rest of your week um, i've already actually made all the videos for this week so you have lots to do and um, i will be back next week um, tomorrow i'm with my granddaughter and then over the weekend, we kind of have a busy schedule. So um, I'm, I, you know, I just wanted to, to get my videos done early in the week. So I was sure they would be done in a timely way and of good quality. And I hope you're enjoying the color lessons. I'm really enjoying them and, and the Day Lily project. Uh, I can't wait to see what you all do with those two. All right, everyone, thank you so very much for being here. And any questions, just ask. Take care.